Hi, my name is Michael with Pack Leader USA. Thank you for purchasing our CP10 capping machine. We're going to be setting up the guardrails, the product sensors, the gates, the supporting block, the capping components, the air regulator, the HMI screen, and also the control box. To ensure a longer lifespan for your CP10 capping machine, it's required to have a dedicated 220 volts to the machine, and then also 70 PSI, or five bar of air connected to your machine. When setting up your guardrails, it's important to go ahead and place three or four products in the center of the conveyor. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and bring your guardrail to your product. Now it's okay to have more space in the beginning of your guardrails, but less space at the end when you're closer to the capper, because you need the product to be directly centered beneath the capper. You go ahead and tighten the thumb screws, and then with the ending guardrails after the capper, just make sure that's spaced out enough for the product to go through. With setting up your product sensors, be sure to have one bottle or product to place in front of your sensors. You have your in-feed sensor and your out-feed sensor. Make sure to go ahead and have them about an inch to two inches apart, or just to depends upon the size of your product. We have a green light and a red light on top of the product sensor and it is seeing the product right now. For whatever reason, if it's not seeing the product, you might have a green light or just one red light or no lights at all. But it's seeing the product right now, so we'll lock it in place. And I'm gonna go ahead and spin it around to make sure it sees the entire product. The sensor sees the bottle, so we'll go ahead and repeat the same process on the outfeed sensor. We're placing it in front of the sensor, spin it around, and it sees the entire bottle. Now your product sensors are set up. With setting up your gates for your capping machine, you have your outfeed gate and your infeed gate. But first you need to go ahead and place the product in front of the product sensor. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and slide your outfeed gate to where it's just touching the product. Once it's touching the product, go ahead and lock your outfeed gate. And then now we have a secondary bottle that we'll go ahead and bring in. And as long as that secondary bottle is touching the first one, we could go ahead and move the infeed gate where we need it to be roughly at. That infeed gate is just going to be touching the first bottle. So what you'll need to do is go into manual mode and then you'll need to press infeed gate forward. So the infeed gate right now is touching the bottle a little bit too much. So I'll bring it in and then bring that bottle back touching the first one. And I'm going to go ahead and lock the infeed gate. You don't forget that you do have your air adjustments that are connected to the air hoses that are also connected to the gates that allow you to have more air pressure or less air pressure to increase the speed of the gates. When setting up the support block for the capping machine, you'll need to have one of your products and slide it in front of the support block and then have the thumb screws loose and be able to move the supporting block back and forth. You'll need to be able to look down the side of the conveyor to see if your product is perfectly centered below this white press cap. So you'll slide the supporting block to 
where it's perfectly underneath the white press cap, but we also want to make sure that this V-shaped clamp is also not too far away or too close from the product. So you'll need to go into manual mode and manually press the clamp bottle forward. But just make sure that the bottle itself does not move at all. At this point, after you've pressed the clamp forward, you have the white press cap. Also in the manual mode, you need to press press cap down. As you can see, the press cap is too far from the bottle. You'll need to go ahead and lower the capper by lowering the crank. And you do want a little bit of pressure from the capper, the white press cap, with pressing the bottle down. You could remove the press cap and push up and clamp, press it back. And we could see if this is still all aligned. So press the white press cap down button, the clamp bottle forward, and this is all held in place nice and snug. And then just to make sure you have your four rollers, your four rollers need to be below the bottom lip of the cap. So when they come forward, you could press capping forward, and that brings the four rollers forward. That will be below, again, the lip of the cap, and the four rollers will spin and tighten the cap down onto your product. To adjust the wheel motor torque setting, which affects the four rollers inside the capper, you can go ahead and increase or decrease the speed, and that will change the tightness of the cap. For the CP10 capping machine, it has three air regulators that run the entire machine. We have two at the top right here. The left one is for the press cap. The right one is for the four rollers for its capping mechanism. Both air regulators need to be set to 5 bar or 70 PSI. The bottom air regulator also needs to be set at 5 bar or 70 PSI. This air regulator does work for the entire machine and controls the airflow for the entire machine itself. All right, so now we can go ahead and turn the capping machine on. We'll let it boot up. All right, now it's ready to go. We're at the home page. We'll go ahead and just press this little enter button here. And now we are at the main menu. We have four main screens. We have auto mode, setting mode, memory mode, and manual mode. We'll first start off at manual mode. Now we can see and control each individual component of the capper. So we have in feed gate forward and in feed gate back, and out feed gate forward and out feed gate back, clamp bottle forward and clamp bottle back. The white press cap is the press cap down and then press cap up. And then we have the wheel motor on, which turn the four wheels on and they're spinning. Then we turn the wheel motor off and then capping forward. And then we also have capping back. And then we have conveyor on and then conveyor off. Now we could go back to the main menu. The next page you'll go under is memory mode. Memory mode does have all up to 30 different saved files. So each saved file can have their own name or their own title. So if you wanted to store or recall one, you can do that. So let's recall file number one. So we'll recall and then press yes. 
and that will load all the previous save settings and timing and delays for that one file. And then you go back and press menu button and continue from there. The next page you go under is setting mode. So we have PLC monitor, time setting, and then capping. Now if you press capping, it is now highlighted and it says clamp bottle capping. What that's going to do is that the four white rollers are just going to go ahead and clamp the bottle. They're not going to spin or tighten the cap itself. They're only going to clamp the cap and that's it. Generally, you're almost always going to want to have capping so then that way the four rollers can tighten your cap onto your product. For a PLC monitor, you could go through and you're able to inspect each individual component and sensor within this menu. So you can see which ones are highlighted and which ones are not for which ones that are activated, turned on, or turned off at this time. Press back setting mode. So the next page to go to is time setting. Now you can see the individual components, the timing and delays from when each one is activated. So in feed gate close delay, an out feed gate close delay, out feed gate open delay. Those are all activated from the in feed and out feed product sensors from when they are seeing the product go by and pass the sensors. The clamp bottle delay forward is triggered by the out feed product sensor. And then it says 0.94 seconds for this setup. And that's from when the product is seen by the sensor and by the time it reaches the center of the supporting block and the center of the V-shaped clamp. The press cap delay is when the white press cap comes down onto the cap and presses it down. The capping delay time is when the four rollers come in and tighten the cap. But with this, it gives it a delay of 0.25 seconds for this setup. Now if you go into next page, you can see capping. This is how long the four white rollers will spin and tighten the cap onto the bottle. The bottle jam sensor delay is set at five seconds for this setup. And so if, if a product is sitting in front of the sensor, for more than five seconds, an alarm will go off and stop the machine. The bottle jam release delay is once that jam is cleared, one second later, the machine will continue on. And for this setup, the conveyor speed is at, set at six meters a minute. Now you can press last page, and then press last page again, and we can go back to the main menu. These settings and time delays will be different based upon your product and your setup. Next, we'll go to auto mode. And now we have stop, home, conveyor, capping, free count set, which if you wanted to run 100 products, you could push in 100 at the zero. And once the counter reaches 100 products, the machine itself will stop. But if you want to clear out whatever number you have, you could press and hold the counter clear button and that will zero it out. Capacity slash minute is capacity per minute. After three or four bottles that go through the capper, it will give you a rough estimate of how many bottles you're doing per minute. Next page. Again, this is just the time setting page and you can go ahead and go through that based upon your product and your needs. Last page. In order to start your machine, you have to push the home button first. The reason is, is because the home button is an additional safety feature, but if you don't, you push conveyor on, it will tell you that you have to push the home button first. So we push the home button, and now we could go ahead and press conveyor. When you're ready to start capping, you could push capping on. In the event if you ever need to check the control box for maybe a fuse or any other plugs or wires, you can access the control box on the side of the capper right below the HMI screen. To 
learn more about this equipment, please visit us at packleaderusa.com.